Hello! Well, like I promised, I just did some fishing! And I got all this. So I get bones, lily pads, some leather boots. I'm gonna put those on. Got some sticks, some leather, an enchanted book. And those are really handy. So like for instance, the respiration. I can put that onto a helmet so that I can breathe easier in the water. Or sharpness, I can put that on the sword or on the axe and make them even sharper. Uh, Multi-shot can be put on the bow. Uh, power can also be put on the bow. Um, and I got a name tag and that's so if I get any critters that I want to keep, maybe I want a pet zombie. Another enchanting book, Feather Falling. That goes on boots so that I don't fall as hard from high places. <laughs> on breaking three, and power is already on that bow, so it's already got some good enchantments on it. And I got a bottle of water. That's handy for like making potions. Uh, you can just pour out the water and keep it that way. <laughs> Um, and then right here is a tripwire hook, and what you do with that is you hook it up to some string, hook it up to a device, and it'll trigger something to happen. And this is a bowl. This is a very key component when making beet soup or mushroom soup. So I'm going to put on the boots. Now I've got more armor. Yay! And my crops have grown. Yay! So now I've got potatoes. I've got some more beets. Uh, it's gotten taller. <laughs> more potatoes. More beets. That one's not grown yet. So Carrots. So we got ourselves some pretty good things going on right now. And this is still a pretty early game. And there's our first wheat. Oh, those weren't quite ready yet. That's why. That one's ready. That's ready. That's ready. That's ready. Nope, that wasn't ready. That's definitely ready. That's not. That is. Uh, none of these are ready. So we'll just go ahead and harvest some sugar. Do 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 do. And now you see how easy it is to harvest. Ooh. We got some beetroots that got ready. Alright. So I'm going to go ahead and swap some things out real quick. Let's put the seeds down here. And the way that I switched that so it's quickly on from moved from my hotbar to up here or from here to my hotbar is I just hover over it and press the triangle button and it just moves the whole stack down there. And I'll do the same thing to my fishing rod because I'm not using that. And I'll do the same with my bread and sugar cane. That's ready. Nope, that wasn't. Dang it. Alright. So, oh, and the I remembered what it was that I forgot to tell you before in the second video that I wanted to tell you in the third video. And that's why I have these spaced the way they are. Partially it's because of it strictly going around a little pond versus having it in a regular farm. The other reason is because crops in Minecraft grow better in rows. Then they so with me having them spaced like this, this is actually a good thing. 
Alright, lots of potatoes. How many carrots do I have? 26? No, 29. <laughs> I got 19 beetroot. Yeah. So this is a really good start. So now I'm going to continue planting the sugar cane all the way around. And the sugar cane I'm going to use for multiple purposes. Ooh, yay! More seeds. And I had to skip this block. This is gravel. Sugar cane doesn't grow on gravel. Eventually I can change that out, but I'm not too concerned about that right now. Sugar cane can grow on sand. Um, yeah, part of the reason why I am not concerned about the gravel is because I plan on changing uh, the way this lake is situated. It's called terraforming, and I can change it however the heck I want. <laughs> Speaking of want, I want some close squid ink sacks. Those will come in handy for some other things I would like to do. Gotta get up, gotta make sure I can breathe. Don't want to suffocate and drown. Well, oh, there it is. Yep, don't want to die. So, ooh, that was quick. All right, and now I got myself some glowing sacks. I can combine those with picture frames so that I can make what's in the picture gl frame glow. I can, um, what else can glowing sacks be used for? <laughs> If you ever have a question on what an item can be used for, one thing that you can try doing is going over to your crafting table and haha, -ha, see? Right there. It'll show you what it can be used for. And so like, here's a cake, wheat, sugar, egg, milk. Cookie is wheat and cocoa beans. This is rabbit stew. So a bowl, mushroom, rabbit, carrot, baked potato. Beet stew, beets in a bowl. Bread, wheat, uh, hay bale, lots of wheat. This is carrot on a stick. So a fishing pole plus a carrot. That's how you steer pigs. This is a warped fungus on a stick. That's for steering striders. Striders are in the nether, so we'll talk more about them later. And I keep hearing a zombie. Oh well. Okay. He must be underground. There must be a cave underneath me. So let's do some caving. I'm going to get rid of a bunch of stuff. I'm going to keep food, because when you're caving you want food. You want coal, even though you're probably going to get a bunch of coal. You want wood and sticks. And it's always good to have a spare pickaxe. Now, when I was up there chopping down the spruce, I remember seeing a cave. Let's see here. Let's see if I'm right. We're not exploring the ravines, mostly because they're deep. It's really easy to die. 
All right, let's make a bunch of torches. And I am going to put them on the left just to help me be able to get out because it's really easy to get lost when caving. Oh, this was a short one. But with me having those torches there, that makes it so monsters can't spawn in here. Except for maybe slime. Slime's the only exception to that rule. Alright. Let's see if we can find another cave. We got plenty of piggies and bees. I love this place. It's perfect. Now, let's see. That's definitely not a cave. Hmm. I may just want to set up, start setting up a mine. Because I'm going to need to go down pretty deep, pretty deep. And that's when my coordinates up in the top left corner of the screen will come in very handy. Huh? Another flower. I don't have... I just realized that I don't have poppies either. Poppies are another way of getting red dye. There's actually three ways of getting red dye. Poppies, beetroots, and uh, rose bushes. Okay, let's pick a good open spot. Bot. Ooh, another flower I don't have. Doodaloo doo do. See that right there? Ooh, wait. Ooh. This is a good opportunity. And I have a stone pickaxe, which means I can get this. This is iron. That little floating thing right there, that is an raw that is raw iron. Hey, here is where is it? Where is it? Okay. That is a nasty zombie. Annoying. Oh, another thing that I got from fishing was my levels. I got a bunch of levels by fishing. Go away, go away, go away. I don't want you. Goodbye. Goodbye. That thing that the zombies are dropping, that is raw, f rotten flesh. Oh, geez. this thing is loaded. We got spiders, and skeletons, and zombies all on the attack. And oh, more! I wanted this, the bone. Ha <laughs> ha! Don't kill me! Come on out! You gotta get me if you want me. Ugh. Sometimes it's just easier to face them where they can't get you. So you can definitely get me with me at, at this get me at this range. But okay. All right, I need to eat something. See when your hunger is full then your hearts are able to regenerate a whole lot easier. And so now I've got spider's eye from killing the spiders and string and I got bones from skeletons and arrows and the rotten flesh came from the zombies. So we got ourselves a little nexus right here. So let's start lighting that up. This right here is glow lichen it emits some light and trust me when I say some light is better than none. Ooh, he dropped an iron ingot. So after you smelt the raw iron in your, either your furnace or your blast furnace, uh, that will become this. And then you can use it to make things like swords. You can also use it to make um, armor, better armor, buckets, uh, also those shears that I mentioned for the sheep, 
and it's if you want wool it's better to shear the sheep because you'll get more uh, you'll get like two or three blocks of wool using shears whereas if you kill the sheep you only get one so it's like meh but one is w better than none when you're first turning out and look coal this is a good place oh never ever 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 make the mistake I was about to make which is to dig straight down the reason why is because you never know if there's going to be a hole underneath your feet and if you, there, if you fall down, you may not be able to get back up. Um, or it could be worse. You could fall into lava. You could fall into um, a place full of monsters. So it's just a bad idea all around to dig straight down. Now with me jumping over and kind of going, di uh, jumping a ways and trying to get to places, that's referred to as parkour. I know. It sounds kind of weird calling it that sometimes but it's a lot like uh, what people imagine parkour to be I know it's not the exact same but it's close enough for a video game and the only reason why I can say that is because I've looked into parkour I'm not a practitioner mostly because I haven't tried so, I know, I didn't get all the coal. One thing that I try to do this early... Oh, crap, another ravine. I'm not surprised we came across it, though. Because um, we have so many ravines around here. So, it's not news. But... Yeah. Anyway. But usually one thing that I try to do, especially early game, is when I go caving, try to collect as many ores as I can. So an ore would be like the iron. It'd also be coal right here. I also try to light things up as much as I can as I go. Uh, I don't like the sounds. I mean, can you hear them? You got the rattling of the bones. You have the creeping and creaking of the spiders. Ooh, there's an enemy down there. Oh, please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. I'm not ready to fight you yet. I need a place that he can't get me. Uh, let's see here. Good. Okay, now I can take him off. Where'd he go? Oh boy! <coughs> yes, I I made him mad intentionally. And the reason why I did that is because I want something from him. Enderman dropped ender pearls. Uh, where'd he go? Oh. And ender pearls are used for ender chests, which are really handy to have. Uh, they're also used for getting to the end. And there are two things. Ooh, that's bad news. 
There are two things to remember when fighting an Enderman. One is that they're tall. They're three blocks tall, which means they cannot go in anything shorter than three blocks. Oh boy, I'm going to have to take him out. The other thing to remember about an enderman is that he can't handle water. It's lethal to him. This is why you need to go to bed. It's time. This is also why we need a roof over our head. See, the village is safer than this. But yeah, he can't go in water. And he can't go in a space that's two blocks tall or less. Go away. I'm trying to talk here. Now let's see. Oh, that guy floating over there with the two llamas? That is a wandering trader. They are good for two things. They carry around items that are somewhat harder to come by early game. Uh, let me get to a place where I can not die while I'm looking at what he's got. Uh, dripstone, glowstone, and... Uh, okay, he, this guy doesn't have anything I want. But he's still useful. Though I'm going to have to kill his llamas to do this. See, he has leads. Is that broke my... Hand? Oh, they saw. <laughs> but they spat each other, so I'm going to let them take care of that. <laughs> That's one really nice thing that you can do sometimes, is you can get your enemies to attack each other. Like these llamas. <laughs> but yeah, the other good thing about a wandering trader is you can get free leads off of him. So it's definitely something worth doing. I'm going to let those two just go at it. I mean, they're not spitting at me, though they're probably gonna, one of them's probably gonna spit at me when they're done fighting. Oh, one thing that I should have done that I typically do when I find holes in the ground, um, like that cave, is I put a torch right outside of it so I know where it is. So like this one right here, Put a torch right there. Ooh, there's copper down there, right where my crosshairs are. Uh, but which is the one that I. Nope, 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 nope. Part of the reason why I do that is so I know where it is uh, and I don't drop into it unexpectedly. Oh, this is a two for one special. Nice. Okay, this one's not that big. That's okay. It's got coal. And I'm gonna need that. I really don't like having the sound of zombies in my ear. Oh. That'll get in the way. So, this is a little baby horsey. This is a foal. What? Oh, no. I thought I saw something that I was looking for in a different place. But, no, I didn't. I really should mark the uh, ravines. Part of the reason why I haven't yet is because to mark them takes a little bit more than just one torch. 
Oh. The llama fight is done. Let's see. Sometimes when a llama dies, they drop uh, leather. But looks like they didn't this time. That's okay. All right. We've actually done a lot. I've got iron. More baked potatoes. I'm gonna put these in there. So, three spider eyes, two more string, three arrows, four more bones, because if you remember, I got bones in the fishing chest. A puppy, a tulip, some more rotten flesh, two leads, a seed, an iron ingot, uh, some granite, some andesite, some diorite, and some cobblestone. Cobblestone you can put into the smelter to make stone, and then you put it in again and you can make smooth stone, which will help in some of the other things that we're going to build. Like, ah. Uh, trying to remember, was it the anvil or was it the stone cutter? I think it's the stone cutter. Let's put that in my inventory. That way I can look it up. Because I know, yep. Yeah, the stone cutter requires three stone and an iron ingot. So I'm going to need to cook up some stone. And then you got yourself a compass, which will, which always points you to spawn. Um, there's those shears I was talking about, and see now we can make iron tools. They last longer than stone tools, stone tools last longer than wood tools, and there are some, there's kind of a step to things. So for instance, a wooden pickaxe can mine stone and any other rocks and coal. But it cannot iron. It cannot get iron. So you need a stone pickaxe to get the iron. And the stone pickaxe can also get copper. Um, an iron pickaxe can get gold, lapis lazuli, uh, redstone. It can also get diamond. Diamond is something we're gonna have to dig deep to get. So right now we're on level 30, uh, excuse me, 64 of the world. See that middle number right there in the middle of my coordinates? That tells me wh how high or how deep I am. So 64 is considered the middle for now. <laughs> Once 1.18 happens, that's going to change. Now, currently, in order to get diamond, we need to go to level 11. Because that's actually a pretty optimal spot to get not just diamond, but also you can get iron, coal, lapis, uh, redstone, gold, almost everything. You can't, don't usually find emerald too often at those levels. Usually it's in higher levels. Uh, but once 1.18 comes out, you'll find emerald in the higher levels and diamond will still be in the lower levels. The world goes down to zero. But before you get to zero, you hit bedrock so you don't fall through the world and into the void. Once 1.18 hits, you can go as far down as negative 64, which is pretty dang deep. But you can also go as high as 200 and something. I don't remember the exact number. But so we've got our iron. Let's go ahead and make some shears. And I'll go ahead and make 
stone, an iron pickaxe, and an iron sword. But also, I'm going to make a. I'm going to make two buckets. Um, a helmet, a breastplate, and I'm going to change out my armor. I am going to swap out the leather for the iron. And when I get out of my inventory, look at what happens to the little images for my iron for my armor. See, I've I've got better protection now. But I think we are going to call it a day. I hope you enjoyed this, and all I gotta say is, okay, Papa, I love you!